flipping things. I'm feeling things. Oh, I think I wasn't going live on vertical yet. It was the old go live thing. We're live. So for those just joining us on vertical, we've been horizontal for a while. Why we have to be up and down and all around, I don't know. We're doing musical trivia. So if you're ready for it, who's got a blur song too? There we go. All right, Nick, Nicholas, you the man, man. <laughs> You know what you have to do, right? You have to write it. Otherwise, I know you're singing it, but you have to be singing it with emojis and or words. You get one more chance here. All right, everybody, places everybody right then. Yeah, we're going to play this right here. Yeah, all right, bollocks, bollocks, governor. <laughs> I got my head checked by a Joan Jack. It wasn't easy, but nothing else. Sorry, trying not to shout your ears out. My bad. God, what a riff! Somewhere we we should put it into our in our members area. We got this great section called songs we like, and there was a behind the scenes of that. And Blur was very much taking a piss as the brits say where it's like the record company was like hey we need a hit yada 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 and they're like uh here's this demo of this song song that we did as a joke and then everybody including the band i think once they saw the royalties coming in realized that this is like this was good this is better than they intended sometimes when you goof and when you're just having a laugh having a laugh governor my apologies to my British friends. I did, I put in my time. I lived over there in England for a couple of years and just enough to offend everyone I met there with my impersonation. So um, for my vertical enthusiasts, you're just joining us. My name's guitar friend, Tim. Uh, I run uh, guitar lessons online. It's a lot of fun. I, uh, back in the day, uh, behind on the screen here, behind me is a shiny object. It's a platinum record for playing with Colby Calais. On her first record, I played guitar with and for her. And then I was her her band leader, music director on the road, which meant I was a guitar player and singer in the band, but also I would put together the set lists and figure out like how we would do like an acoustic version of the song, like stripped down for like radio performances at 8 a.m. in the morning, all those things that you hear. Like sometimes you just got to wing it and figure out like how to dial it in for those situations. So we would uh, go all over the world. Like that first record, we did a lot of stuff in Germany and England our first gig was in London, um, and then we did a lot of stuff in the U.S. as well, obviously. I went on to write a song with her and Jace Mraz called Lucky. That's that one that goes, you know, jumping from Blur to now this. Do you hear me? I'm talking to you Across the water, across the deep blue Ocean under the open sky Oh my, baby, I'm trying and then Colby sings, and then so on and so forth. Much jubilation ensues. So that was my big hit song that I wrote, and then I went on to make more and more music, just sort of writing and producing, making my own music under my name, Tim Fagan. You can find my music under Tim Fagan. Um, and yeah, I, I live in Nashville, and I'm living the dream, making the guitar songs for y'all. Uh, today, we're talking about chord tones. We've got one more jam here to get into, and then we're going to find out who won our Dare to Share challenge. So, if you've ever wondered, how do I play the right notes when the chords change? We're starting with that today on just classic one, four, five. And we've done the key of C. We've done the key of G. And now, can anyone tell me what key we're in right here? Thanks, John, appreciate that. It's especially... <laughs> Sultry here with the frog in my throat today, but. Exactly, Nick. Yeah, the acoustic stripped down versions became really fun to do because, as you know, they can be sort of more, more charming even. Okay, we are in the key of D. Love it. Love it, love it. It's good that your autocorrect goes towards love, though. There's some autocorrects that, because they only learn what you're putting into it, right? Sometimes, that's why I don't have autocorrect. My ty typos are fully free range and organic. Key of D. D, E, we've got an F sharp. Holy camoly, hold the phone. And 
a C sharp. Are you sure about this? You sure about that? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So those are our scale degrees for the key of D major. We're starting to get the vibe here. I think we understand this. I've got more for you after this, by the way, that's gonna take this. If you're like, I get it, I get it. Okay, stick with me this one more go round. Then I've got a way to just take this across the whole fretboard that I think might delight you. Here's the pentatonic notes. The one, two, three, we skip the four. We get the five and the six. Let's do it up here on this classic pentatonic spot. Jam along, noodle along, along with it. If you already know where we're going, go for it. Spell out the chord changes, follow them. Triumphantly. I think I switched up the colors this time, but that's okay. So those are the seventh degrees. Those are the C sharps. If we add those to our skeleton, that is the D major pentatonic. The D notes are these ones right here. So these are your roots. These are kind of your anchors. I'm gonna come right out and say, I think this is more important than caged. Being able to find the root note of whatever you're going for, whether it's a root note of a scale or a root note of a chord, that is your GPS. You drop that root note and then you can find the things that live around it. The faster you are with that, the more free you are to just be thrown into any situation, any chord, if it goes by for two beats or you hangs out two minutes you know how to find your, your thing that you're going for oh my gosh G golly G will occurs okay and this chord progression is a nice it's one of these ones that could trip you up because it's like same same different I think you already know what I mean where it's like one four one five one four five one all right that's what it is. Here we go. So it goes D to one chord, G to the four chord, back to the D, one chord, and then the A, five chord, second half, D, one chord. Is it the same? Not quite. Goes to the five there, then it comes back to the one. Very melodic kind of progression right here. One. Four. One. Five. Four. Now we got the five. And feel free on the chords to spell out a full chord or do a triad and then sort of and then land into some solo playing some some uh, single note playing it's the blending of those two things smoothly that's going to give you that sense of freedom right so if you're like making sense do we like it do we not like it are we convinced are we nonplussed whenever i get this voice i'm like dang i wish i could keep this without the being sick part ah oh boy oh boy okay some of you have seen this so don't spoil the answer i haven't made a new one of these so let me hold on you ready we're gonna do a round of if they mated, if they dated. So this is like celebrity, like what would happen if these two people got together and had a baby. Uh, let's see, is this going to play on the, I don't know if it's going to show on the vertical version. Let me see if I can add this real quick. Hang on. Hang on. I need to add a media source. And I'm going to, and it's going to be good. And it's not going to be ridiculous. And it's very important. Oh no, this is creepy close up. Okay. All right, this is this is getting this is getting out of hand here. Okay, ready? So this is gonna be a close up object, and you've got to figure out what it is before it gets revealed. 
Here we go. Creeper, it's the sick voice, you know? It's a sick voice, right? Creeper, All right. Keep it PG. It's a, it's a not creepy object, but when viewed up close, it is creepy. It's a ginger. Sorry for anyone watching on the on the vertical version. I wasn't able to have the video play there. So you just got to see me reacting to it. But that's just some ginger. Just some good old household ginger. Uh, to your question, Siggy. Uh, concentrating more on triad shapes, cage shapes, or the notes when I target chord tones. Um, it kind of becomes a mix of all of them. So really, it would be focusing on one for the day, like one for a while. And today, what I'm wanting us to look at is, is just the tone of the scale as its own thing. Meaning, like the lighting it up here with these yellow and these uh, green colors, really emphasizing this idea that there's a skeleton underneath. So the skeleton is that pentatonic. And let's imagine if I, if I just played pentatonic over this. It all works, right? And sometimes it like I'll hit some chord tones cuz there's two of the three chord tones for the for those chords for the 4 and the 5, they're already in there. So now today I want to just be thinking what if I went and brought in that extra note? I know that's that's what I keep saying, and you, I'm sure you get it by now. But the idea is that that's what I'm think. Ha, that's how I'm thinking today. So for today, I'm not so much worried about the triad shapes. On a different day, I might be working just purely on triads. So on that day, on on a Tuesday, I might be like. You know, just going in there and just trying to make sure I know where those triads are. What I like is the ability to have triads and scale tones start to mingle with each other so that it becomes one sort of blend, one smoothie of choices that you can that you can go for at will. You know what I think it's time for? I think it's I think it's time for. I'm just gonna put on a drum beat. It's time, folks. Mm -hmm. To get into the dare to share, but never compare. We're going to draw the winner now. Let's go, let's go, let's do it. To all my members who have shown up. And you know, you don't have to share, so there's many of you that have shown up and put in the work. I applaud all of you. But we do have a special tradition here, a brand new growing and thriving tradition in our community where every month there is a Dare to Share Challenge. And this month, the dare was to just pick a chord progression that you like and share it with us in a way where you're like, hey, this is what I love. And uh, these fine individuals in the month of February shared with the community a video of their own playing. The wheel is big and it's packed up and CageBot is still in there. Oh, if CageBot wins, we all die. Not good, we don't want that. So this will be, let me make sure the settings are set correctly so that it really takes its time to spin. Because sometimes when it's set to like, you know, 
to only go spin for a couple seconds, then it's like, whoa, whoa, what was the point of that? Um, let's see, uh, blah, 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 sound and speech. This is one of those apps that changes where things are all the time, and it's constantly trying to get me to buy it. I'm not gonna buy it. The free version's fine. Maybe it's over here? Or no, no, it's down here. It's down here in a different setting. Spin duration, okay. Spin duration is 20 seconds. We love that. It's gonna go for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to spin the spin. This is the one that counts, everybody. In fact, we gotta speed up the music because we need more intensity. Yeah, okay. And we need to, uh, we need to emphasize the, um, the announcer voice. Check, 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 one, two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, Dare to Share Challenge, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Folks, one and one only can be the winner of this Dare to Share. The winner's going to get a one-to-one -one lesson. 60 minutes with the man himself, guitar friend Tim will be this person's friend. More and more every day, we're diving deeper into these scales. We're diving deeper into the love. Here we go. We're daring. We're sharing. Congrats, Brett. So Brett recently landed a gig. A good lead guitar playing gig, right? Way to go, Brett. And now we're gonna we're gonna dive deep, Brett. So whatever I'm not out of breath from the actual push-ups I actually did. That's great. I'm happy for Brett. I'm happy for everyone who dared and shared. Thanks for checking that out, for being awesome. Uh, and I believe in you. And we got a whole nother fresh month ahead of us right now so we're already into march there's going to be some more daring some more sharing that's a fun chord right there in case you haven't played that let me show you that this is a consolation prize for all so see the fingering there so you got this one right there right there that's the trickiest part is the fingering right so you're basically taking the three notes of what would be, in this case, like a, imagine like an A major. But we gotta switch up our fingering. So hold that triad, and now you gotta actually use your, use your pinky there, right? So, but that's all so that you can get that B underneath. So that's an A chord over a B, which creates that really beautiful sus 13 kind of jazz thing that's smooth, which is great. And then you can move that around. Oh, 
Okay, gang, I got one more thing to throw at you, and it's going to be for anyone that is like, all right, I get it. But what if we take it across the neck? And let's take this key of D, where we are. And let's dive into kind of the sort of like busting out of just one area, one position on the neck. And this was literally just something I was messing with before going live. So I don't know if it's, if it's fully cooked, as you might say, as, as far as an idea. But I want to see if we can explore this idea. So looking at where the roots are. And let's take like, um, you know, let's, let's take this D right here. And what I'm going to do is just sort of like spell where those octaves are, where the, where the classic, we'll, we'll get to it. I, I'll just sort of actually be quiet for a second, which is wild. So what am I doing here? I'm just, these are just D notes. If I put them in the right spot and let's check, check our math here. So we've got, there's a D, there's a D. Wrong spot. Yikes. Okay. So to the question that comes up a lot and like what Siggy was asking about is like, what am I thinking of as I'm playing this? Am I thinking chord tones or triads? And for, for me, for my approach, which is always, remember it's music. So anyone's approach to making it is as subjective and open to interpretation as music itself. But if you like the results that someone like me is getting or anyone who's teaching you, and they can articulate how they're thinking while they're doing it. Dive in, enjoy it, and then make it your own, as I always say. So this, for me, has been working probably for a long time, which is that I kind of see the roots as like goalposts. And between those two roots, I have these, everything we're talking about today. I have the notes that are built into like the pentatonic or the major scale. And I, I tend to turn my attention towards just kind of one chunk at a time. So even though, even though in the background, I might be like, I might be able to pull up, let's say like, I don't know if I'm going to draw it correctly, but I might have tons of information that I, that I might be able to pull up if I need it. Like, so right here, I'm just, I'm drawing in like the additional notes of like the pentatonic scale for D in that area. But when I'm actually playing a phrase or a lick in this area, I might only be kind of concentrating on what's happening between those two D notes, those two roots. So what I'm highlighting in the hot pink there is kind of just like, that's kind of all I need for that little zone to, to play with, to be able to have like something that I can express with. So I'm sort of zeroed in on that area. And with what we're talking about today, what if I just add to that these notes that we've been playing with. So, uh-oh, that needs to be yellow. Yellow, yellow. Right, so we're getting a lot of colors going, but I hope you see that what I'm looking at right here, those two Ds and the notes between them. And then if I wanna... So literally, yes, it is just a D major scale, but rather than being like D major scale, I know a D major scale, let me show you that I know a D major scale. It's more like, Oh. So it's a really nice little kind of, if you were to think of an octave on a piano, there's a lot you can do in that octave or an octave in a singer's singing voice, some singers, many that are iconic, especially like me today with my like sort of head cold voice, limited range. But if I was singing like, la da 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 da, this is where the melody lives. And then I'm gonna sing something for you. Hey, yeah. Now that's the best music you've ever heard. That's my point today. What I'm really trying to say is like, when someone is, singing and playing something with intention and melodically it, it that's when you start to hear people say well you know it's it's the notes you don't play or it's like you know less is more it's like this is where you'll actually be able to hear it and feel it and and know that you can own it and be like yeah i'm i'm hitting a chord tone it sounds good i'm putting some feeling into it and that leaves you more room to focus on 
Maybe I'll play with this tone or I'll play with this pickup. Because if you try to mess with the gear and the approach and the, and the tuning and the playing and then too many notes, suddenly it all gets diluted and it's like, you're not sure if you said anything musically that you... Anyway, you get the idea. So that's like one area. And then I would want to keep taking that approach. Um, what I would like is to not make the fretboard look so crazy. So I'm actually going to like, let's imagine if we just, we erase that. So don't worry, it's there. It's in the ether still. But if we were to just keep taking that approach up the neck, there's that D bar chord right there. I, I like sort of taking it one octave at a time and seeing like, oh, I could do that, I could do that. And boom, it's like, or you might prefer to like slide up here. But you see how that's just like a, it's a tasty little nugget and you've got one octave and within that octave, you can build out all of the, all the, the scale degrees that give you the flexibility to be able to be like, all right, I'll just throw that right there, that seven. I could put that one right there behind it. Do you dig it? Do you feel? Do you smell what I'm cooking? Uh, and which notice this is a four. So it'd be up there. So let's try that. Um, and so on and so forth. So I would like y'all to let me know, especially my members who I will be seeing uh, in our daily workouts, our guitar workouts of the day, which if you're interested in what we're doing here at all, literally just like this, but with less blabbing, it's still fun. Less of Tony surfing. We save that for the weekends, but we just do 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes at most of us uh, jamming out. And what do I have here? I think this is like... There's nothing in there. Normally I have like a slide or something, but um, yeah, but basically you get a 14 day free trial. If you go to guitarfriendtim.com, you can get the information there and uh, you can, no matter what, even if you get like a discount code, because I sometimes offer discounts, you start with your first two weeks free to try everything out. Uh, and that's the beauty of it. And if you're still not convinced, if you want to try out some more of my teaching, I have a five day free course. The link has been showing up in the chat. It's also in the description. That's the five day skills challenge. Um, totally free. You get one email a day. It sends you to a page that has a, a video and MP3s and uh, PDF and all, all the stuff. And it takes you through like kind of exactly what we're doing. Like, but like the real rudimentary blocks of like finding the root notes on the fifth and the sixth string and the first string. Uh, soloing with the major and minor pentatonic, triads, modes, groove. A lot of times we, we neglect the right hand stuff. Um, what are y'all doing this weekend? Are you doing anything musically related? You going to see any music? Are you playing any music yourself? Are you recording? Are you uh, listening to music in your home in the comfort of your abode? What's going on musically in your world at the moment? Anything on the horizon you're excited about seeing? Like, is there a gig that you have a concert you're gonna go see where you're like, oh, we're almost there. Sometimes the fun of a show is just the anticipation of like, all right, I got these tickets like six months ago. It's finally coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, John. Yeah, I'm, what I'm hoping is that we start to take the same approach to, to knowing the cowboy chords cold, like just bah, 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 to being able to just sort of grab like these roots in different parts of the neck on different strings to be like, okay, I'm good. And if you have that, it, you build out your, your island of knowledge once you get there. So if I have the root and then I can get into my BB style playing, and then I add to that on some other day, I'm like, oh, I can make it minor. That's great. Even if that's just like what you got, like you can build a lot out of that, right? Nice. John, that's the only way to play S SRV, if you're asking me, is like till the fingers are, till you get the super goo out and you got to glue them back on like he did. Yeah. For a long time, I was playing my my strats, um, 
with 12s with heavy gauge strings on them, tuning down a half step or sometimes a whole step. Um, and boy, oh boy, I love it. I kind of miss it, but because I'm doing a lot of the teaching now, being you know tuned down into different tunings, it's kind of confusing. So I've got them set up with regular, uh, regular gauge strings, but it took a while to get used to just playing you know regular tens. COVID in the house. Oh, COVID in the house. Don't give it to the chickens. Don't get it from the chickens. I hope you're okay, Tim Taylor. Heal up. Plenty to practice. Glad to hear that way. Glad to hear that. Chow, chow, chow. Boom, ba, 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 ba. Playing that guitar every day. I love it, John. Oh, John, we're glad to have you. We have we have a lot of Johns. We have a lot of Michaels. We have a lot of Tims. A lot of fellow Tims in the community. Uh, so the water's fine. Come on up and join us. Um, congrats again to Brett. Way to go, Brett. Good work. Good solid effort out there, Brett. Um, that's about it from me. Over this jammity jam and jam track, let's let's play a little bit more. Oh, it goes to back down to that slow tempo. I like it a little bit peppier there. Let's let's turn it back up to like 80. Yeah, a little bit faster there. The Borg! Cyborg. Roboto guitarist. Okay, let's jam it out here. Do whatever you love and you like and you feel over the G. Forget about the dots. Forget about your problems. And let's just sort of riff out. Here we go. Thanks so much, friends. Yeah, let's go for it, right? 170. Here's one little party trick I'll leave you with. I put this on, it's uh, my Instagram post of the day. I think it's on YouTube also. Scale on a string. So we're in G, which means we've got the open G string. Just do hammer-ons. Just find that scale on a string. Open. I don't know if I'm gonna do this right here. Try that, right? There's that seven. 